The first thing I want us to know this morning, the reason for our celebration this morning, you must really jet. See, if you don't understand why you're celebrating, after a couple of hours, the thing dissipates, you don't have the energy to go on. You don't. But God wants you to know, coach, no matter where you go, no matter what you find when you get there, he has been there before you. Ah. Hallelujah. The doctors are checking you out. They're poor, your blood pressure, your heart rate, and they're bringing bad report. God said, do not be alarmed. Not only have I risen, I've gone before you. Before you ever stepped into that doctor's office, he was there. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's ready to manipulate the results. It does not matter what the doctor is saying. Because he had been there before you. He knew what they would tell you. And he knew the exact counter, uh, how, to counter, how to counter that situation and bring about a different result. Is it a car accident? He was there before you got there. Is it that you are broke? He was there before you got there. What is it that you are faced with? He said, I have risen for the primary purpose of what? Going before you. He's before you. He's not only just preeminent, he actually went before you. Before you were, he is. That's why his name is called I am that I am. In every and any situation that you find yourself in, he was before you. Oh, okay. Let me break it down. Numbers chapter 10. You see, Jesus did not just come to do his own thing. He came to follow the script that his father gave him. Numbers 10. Hallelujah. It's gone before us. That's the reason for his resurrection. Anywhere and any situation that you and I will find ourselves, Jesus has been there. He's been there, done that. <laughs> He's been there, done that, and from the opposite of being there and done that, he testifies. He tells you it's well. It is well with my soul, he says. And it is well with your souls this morning. Why? I've been there, done that. I know all about it. Look at Numbers chapter 10. One verse is enough. Verse 33. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey of what? How many days journey? Ah, just a few people write this thing. Can you, let's read it again. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey of how many days? Three days. How many days was Jesus in the grave for? Three days. Oh, is this a coincidence? Okay. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord. What did he do? Did he go behind them? <laughs> the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them for how many days? Three days. What was he doing? Journey to search out a resting place for them. What are you worried about this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. The, the presence of God has gone on a three-day journey. Yeah. He's gone on a three-day journey. And the only thing Charles is looking for is a resting place. Yes. He wants to survey the place properly. He wants to make sure that before Charles comes through, everything is set. Hallelujah. There may be struggles along the way, but when you get there, you will find what? A resting place. A place of repose. A place of peace. A place of tranquility. A place of prosperity. A place of establishment. A place of, oh my God. I'm not, you, guys, you guys are not hearing me. Hallelujah! Jesus went before them. He has risen and has gone before. What are you doing going before Jesus searching for a resting place? Think about that. The next time you have a migraine headache and you think maybe you have brain cancer, think about that. The next time you get a report about your child, and you think maybe they're on dope or drugs and they're going to be useless. Think about that. God is going ahead of them to find a resting place. 
I do not care what the enemy dangles at our children. It does not matter how he pulls them by the nose. I'm here to tell you, as long as they belong to this covenant of God, my Lord, God knows how to bring a rescue to the situation at the right time. So do not fret. Do not be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, hallelujah. Let your heart be established in the peace of God that passes all understanding. The devil is nothing. He's only a servant. And as such, he's limited to his errand. Go and ask Job. God said, do this and this and no more. I'm like a little puppet servant. <laughs> okay, God, what next? God sends him back on the He goes back and do it and comes back. He, he cannot do a thing unless God permits it. Who is the devil? Who born the devil? We gave, him, we gave him too much estimation. He goes before us to prepare a resting place. A resting place. So no matter what you find, no matter what the situation, the reason he rose from the dead, the reason we celebrate he's been risen today is because he's gone already to search out for a resting place. He said, Pastor, but this does not look like rest. I'm having people on my job call me and harass me, intimidate me. They, they, you don't understand. The foolishness of God is at the end of the day wiser than man. The things that's happening around you that look foolish, that's exactly what God ordered. It is in that foolishness that he magnifies himself. Yes. Whatever the situation is, just do not be alarmed. Because once you get into a trigger, into alarm and panic, you will lose your rationale. Spiritually so. You will not be able to follow God. Everything God is saying, will not, he won't count. You won't be able to use it. Because you are too much tied to the natural and you are a spiritual being living in his earthly suit that's it you are a spiritual being you are a spiritual being now I'm looking at time here let me take in order for you to understand what rest means in order, to, in order for you to understand that God when he says he's finally a resting place for us it does not mean the place where you're going to lay down and just go to sleep <laughs> that's the problem some of us sleep too much as it is. <laughs> Amen. So that's not what God is saying. Uh, we're going to define that in a minute, but let me just show you from scriptures. Ruth chapter 3. Ruth chapter 3. Then I'm going to come back to Galilee and close. I've not done Galilee yet. I didn't forget. Look at Ruth chapter 3. Verse 1, then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you that it may be well with you? King James says, rest. King James translation says, rest. This is the kind of rest that God is talking about. The kind that Naomi sought for Ruth. It's not a condition where you just lay down and sleep on, to no end. No. But rather, it's a condition or situation where you enter into a, a dimension where you don't have to do anything for yourself and by yourself. It's a condition or dimension where you enter into something that's already finished for you. When I got dressed this morning, I did not have to sew this suit. If I sold it, I'd come weird here. That would be very obvious. I'd be using safety pins to just join the whole thing together. But, you know. but when I picked it up to wear it, it was already sewn. I just entered into the rest of what was finished. It was done. All I had to do was just find it and put it on. Finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So in Ruth chapter 3, Naomi, an apostolic figure in Ruth's life, Ruth having served her for all these years, and as a good, kind-hearted leader, says to Ruth, you have served very well. 
have been blessed by your ministry, Ruth. Now, as your leader and apostolic figure, I want to help you find rest. I want to help you find establishment. I want to help you find security. Now, prior to this time, Ruth was going back and forth to the field every day, collecting grain, getting left over, and she was happy that she was getting blessed. Unfortunately, the charismatic church, we've liked those trickles of blessings until we miss the real thing. We think manna is normal. Hmm. You don't understand. God supplied manna as a temporary measure. It was never intended to be the real thing. That's why when it entered the promised land, it stopped. Drinking from the rock in the wilderness is not normal. That was not the God thing. Yes, he did it because they had a need. But it was not his intention that they keep on striking rocks. It was his intention, the only wells. Come on, Pastor. Unfortunately, many of us camp at the temporary measures that God has given us to carry us over. Not knowing he has greater and more things in store for us. So, Naomi understood that Ruth's needs were being met. She went to the field, got some grains, got blessed, came home, shouted, testified. But Naomi said, I know, I know, it's good, it's good. But God has more. Yes. God has more. He doesn't want you to just bring a measure home, or two measures home, or seven measures home. He wants you to own the field. So she said, I need to find rest for you. I need to find security for you. And what did she do? She encouraged the young woman to meet with Boaz, the owner of the field. And by the time that story is all over, in Ruth chapter 4, Ruth became the wife of Boaz. Guess what? She never went to the field for another day of her life. She never had to measure barley another day of her life. What happened? Did she buy real estate? No. Did she become a farmer? No. She simply entered into what? Rest. She entered into the finished work. The work that was already finished by Boaz, she just entered. And because she entered, whatever Boaz owned belonged to her. And so God is saying to you and I, he is searching on a three-day journey for a resting place, a place where you and I can come like roof and enter into the finished work. What God had finished before time ever began. God saw you before time began. He has already found a place for you, Titi Lion. He has already marked a place for you, Charles. He's already marked a place for you, Lefty. He knows exactly what you are going to need. And he's just trying to bring us into that place in him where we come, just come into his finished work. And when you get there, you cannot say you did it. Notice, Ruth can never go to TBN and share the testimony of the blessings of Boaz. She didn't do anything. She couldn't. That's where God is taking us. As long as you can say you did it, you play this part in it, it's not God. The rest of God is a dimension where God gets all the honor and all the glory and all of the praise where his name will be magnified. Are you hearing me? Oh, glory to God. I can go on and on and on and on, but I don't want to kill you guys. I don't want to kill you guys. If you really want to do a study, pick what I just said up in Hebrews chapter 4. It's in there. The Bible says, there remained a rest for the people of God. That's what the writer of the New Testament is talking about. I don't have time to get into that now. But, you know, you are Bible students. Brother Larry, you're looking at me right there. <laughs> 